Hello, and welcome back to Recitation. Uh, the problem I'd like to work with you now is a long one. So uh, it's going to be practice uh, computing line integrals. So to begin with, we have this function of, of two variables. Uh, f is x to the fifth plus 3xy cubed. And we have this uh, c is the upper, semicir upper semicircle uh, going from 1, 0 to minus 1, 0. So it's this, this upper semicircle here that we often consider. And so the first thing that we want to do is to just compute the gradient, uh, capital F, to be the gradient of, of, of this function f. And then uh, parts b through d, we're going to compute this line integral uh, of, of this uh, vector field f along this curve c. We're going to compute it in three different ways. So first of all, we're going to compute it directly, just using the definition. And, uh, and then in part C, we're going to compute it using the path independence of line integrals. And we're going to replace the path C with a simpler path. And then uh, finally, in part uh, D, we're going to use the fundamental, fundamental theorem of line integrals. Now, when you do part B, uh, what I want you to do is set up the integral. You're going to get a very complicated integral that I wouldn't want to try to compute. So, uh, so just set up the integral completely, and then, and then uh, go ahead and move on to parts C and D. So why don't you pause the video and work on that, and we'll check back in a few minutes, and uh, we'll solve it together. Welcome back. I hope you had some luck uh, working these problems. So let's do the easy one first, computing the gradient. So for the gradient, We just take the two partial derivatives, so we get uh, 5 x to the fourth plus 3y cubed. That's the, derivative in the, the partial derivative in the x direction. And in the y direction, we just get 9y squared. Uh, 9xy squared. OK. So now, um, for part b, We're asked to compute this, uh, this integral directly. So we have to recall what it means. So first of all, uh, we have our, if we go back over here, we have this, this curve C. And uh, we need to give a parameterization for it. And so we're going to introduce a, a, a parameterization R of a variable T. And we're going to use that to do our computations. So let's, uh, so let's set R of T. So this is our usual circle that we're used to working with. So we're just going to take the usual parameterization, cos t and sine t. And uh, what's important is that the range is going to be from uh, t equals 0 to t equals pi. It's t equals pi because we don't want to go all the way around the circle. We just want to go halfway around until we get to negative 1. So if that is r of t, then we can compute the differential dr of t. And so uh, it's going to be just, the, um, just taking the derivative. So we have negative sine t and cos t. Okay, uh, dt. And, uh, and so now uh, we can just um, we can just write out the, this line integral directly. So the integral over c of f dot dr just becomes, so we have the integral from t equals 0 to pi. The, those are our ranges for our curve. And now we're going to take the dot product of f, which was uh, 5 x to the fourth plus 3y cubed, 9xy squared. We're just going to dot this with our dr vector, which is minus sine t cos t. Altogether, we have uh, dt. And uh, so now notice that here we've got the variables x and y, and here we've got the variables t. But because of our parameterization, we actually know that, for instance, x is cos t uh, and, uh, and y is sine t. So we can write this all out. So 
So we have uh, 5 cos to the fourth t plus 3 sine cubed t. So that's this, this guy written out in terms of t. And then we, minus, we, t we multiply it by a negative sine t. And then uh, to that, we add the, the other component. So we have uh, plus a uh, 9. So we have cos. So we have cos t coming from the x and another cos t here. So we have cos squared t. And we have a sine squared t. dt. OK, so that's, that's what it means to compute this line integral directly. And it's not something that I, that I look forward to doing. So let's, uh, so let's see if we can use path independence to make our lives a little bit simpler. So, uh, so that's going to be c. So what we want to do is we want to replace our original curve c with any other curve that uh, has the same uh, starting point and the same ending point. And the curve that I would like to use is just the straight line connecting them. There's lots of different choices that you could do, but to me, this one um, seems, seems the most natural. So let's give that a try. So, so instead, so if we want to use uh, this curve, so let's let r of t be the curve negative t, 0. So negative t because we want it to run um, uh, moving to the left. And then our range is just going to be uh, from minus 1 to 1. So uh, when t is minus 1, then we get minus a negative 1, and it starts at 1. Uh, and when t is 1, it goes to negative 1. And notice that it goes uh, along the zero, y equals 0 axis. OK. So, so now we can do the same computation that we did before, but we can use this curve. So the thing that I want to emphasize is that if we're, doing, uh, if we're computing a line integral uh, of a gradient function, so of a function which is conservative, then we can use, uh, we can use any line and we can use any path that uh, connects the two endpoints. We can replace our path. And so that's what we did. We replaced C1 with C2. And so now this becomes much easier in, in two ways. So we'll see. So our range now is just t goes from minus 1 to 1. And uh, so dr here is just minus 1, 0. That's dr. Uh, and there's a dt. And uh, let's see. So now f, uh, we had this, uh, this uh, value for f. But notice that the, that the y coordinate is always 0 along this curve. So, uh, so the y coordinate being 0 means that we just have 5t to the fourth and and that's and, and then zero here. That's it because uh, because we set y to be zero along this curve. Okay, so all together, this is a very nice integral to do. So just taking this dot product, all we have is minus five t to the fourth dt. That simplified greatly, and we just have uh, we just have minus t to the fifth from one to minus one. And so we get simply minus 2. So that was a much, much more straightforward integral to do than the one that we started with. Now finally, uh, uh, in D, we're suggested to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So remember, let's remember what that says. That says that if we take a, if we have any curve, and we are integrating, uh, and the line integral that we're taking If we know that we're taking the, the line integral not of any vector field, but of, of a vector field which is already the gradient of f, then that tells us that this is simply f 
of the uh, end point minus f of the uh, start starting point of our curve. So that's so so really we don't need to do uh, any integral at all. And so so let's see f. So so re recall that f was um, x to the fifth plus 3xy cubed. And so uh, the end point, so we just need to take f of uh, minus 1, 0 and subtract f of 1, 0. And so uh, plugging this all in together, we get so a, a minus 1 minus a positive 1. Altogether, we get minus 2. And, and of course, this does agree with what we did when we computed using the line integrals.